Counter Narrative News wants to bring you a clip from a documentary made in 1977 called Step Forward Youth by Menelik Shabazz. Menelik Shabazz is a very significant person in the history of global revolutionary culture, actually, and particularly pertaining to the experience of uh, black people in Britain being oppressed by the racist state here. Melik Shabazz was born in Barbados in 1954 on the 30th of May and passes away at the age of 67 years old, unfortunately qu relatively quite young, in Harare in Zimbabwe on the 28th of June in 2021. Melik Shabazz made the first, one of the first black made films in this country, a fictional film, called Burning an Illusion in 1981. Horace Ove makes the first black-made fictional film here called Pressure, which actually like Burning an Illusion and much of other Menlik Shabazz's work, Horace Ove's Pressure is filmed in and around the working class black grassroots in Labrick Grove, Notting Hill. It's, Pressure is an amazing film. Everyone should really watch it as with Burning an Illusion. Burning Illusion is basically a story of black working class uh, a love story, a story about a relationship that gets strained by society's oppressions and pressures. And also Menlik Shabazz makes another bunch of other significant films, including Blood Run in 1982, about the black, pe black people's first day of action following the New Cross fire, which is also a really important documentation of that historical development and that protest movement there. Also he makes in 1996 a film about the revolutionary anti-slave anti insurrectionary revolutionary leader, leader Paul Bogle around the 1865, 1865 Morant Bay Rebellion. Coming back to this, Step Forward Youth is just getting, it seems, around the Ladbrook Grove area again, getting young people in their late teens, early 20s, particularly two, a young black woman and a young black man, talking about their experiences, about how they see themselves, how they reflect upon themselves in relation to their homeland in the Caribbean and coming to here, to this capitalist racist society. And they're really clear that they're not British and they don't want to be British. And even when they're asked, what about if things become positive for black people here in Britain? They still say very clearly, definitively, we will never call ourselves British. Really fascinating. And the reason why is because this is still a relatively radical moment in which young black and brown people or just black young people in general, however you want to kind of uh, define them or frame, frame them. They have leadership. They have global leadership. They have leadership here. Clearly, reggae and Rastafari culture is a means by which they can construct and define themselves organically in a way that is culturally counter-oppositional in a militant, revolutionary way against the British racist state. And this is really important. Culture, culture, and culture again. Culture determines everything. If, if there is a reactionary culture that predominates, then there'll be a reactionary politics and lived experience by oppressed people. If there's a relatively radical and liberatory culture that is popularized, then that informs a movement towards resistance and liberation. And these things are all intertwined with each other. The grassroots produce the culture, the culture produces the grassroots, be it in a negative direction or in a positive direction. It's up to the grassroots which orientation they want to go in. And then we have this interesting thing, where as the radical black politics of the, well, frankly, the 1950s, 60s, 70s, into the 80s and into the end of the 90s, it all starts to crunch, really even, even by the 70s. And you can clearly see that radical politics is just seeped away from the grassroots by the 90s, especially the late 90s, really. And then what replaces this independent, autonomous, dignified political cultural identity of blackness in 
a revolutionary posture against the state, you have then concepts of British Asian and Black British. These are all colonial agendas. Total colonial divide and rule approaches which in line with the political and financial corruption and counter-revolution against the black revolutionary force see successes again and again and again as we have gone forward from the, the, the 1970s. Anyway, let's listen to the young people and a, a few more comments after that. Yes, I did say I've got an identity problem, you know, because I'm a West Indian like my parents are, and I've got nobody to identify with being as I'm British. You know, it's really bad. Would you like being called British? No, I'm not British. It's not my fault that I was born in England. I don't identify as being British. I'm West Indian as far as I'm concerned. Why do you like to be identified as British? Because British are white people. Yeah, I'm, I'm not white. Any other reasons? Well, you know, Britain just doesn't have anything for me. It just doesn't do anything for me. I don't... I, British means white to me. And I'm not white. I'm far from it. So, you know, I can't identify with it. But if this society was to make things better for... <coughs> for blacks born here, would you identify with this society? No, I still wouldn't. I just wouldn't, I just don't want to be British. Would you say you've got an identity problem? Yeah, because no man that was born in England, no black man that was born in England liked to be called British. Why not? Well, we've been brought over here and We'd be bottom of the table. We've been treated bad. And if a man, and if a man asks me, was I born in England? If I, if I, if I am British, I'm not gonna say yes. I'm not gonna say yeah. I come from that place that I've been, tre been treated bad in. So when people ask you where were you born, what do you say? I said I was born in the West Indies. Really wonderful to hear what they had to say. Uh, I hope they're doing well and they're healthy and happy today. It'll be good to hear how they're doing and what's come of them and to be in touch with them, frankly. One important, interesting thing that Roy Saw said, and he just recently passed away, the Guyanese heritage, black power, radical leader who came in the late 50s to London. And we'll, we'll discuss him in another episode soon. But what Roy Saw said, which is an impo important point, which other people have made as well, is that when it comes to British state colonial, quote unquote, multiculturalism, what it is, it's an approach to rip us in a colonial fashion, rip out our actual humanity and replace it with a hollowed out colonial identity, even this colonial flattering that we're Asian British or we're black British. Roy Saw makes the point that a, a true positive multiculturalism would be that white people in Britain adopt the language and the dress and the culture of ours as, as much as we are kind of just relating to them. And this is interesting, isn't it, when it comes to the racist comments of his, racist historian David Starkey when it came to the August 2011 uprising of four days, because he blamed white people for quote-unquote turning black, for exactly adopting a particular type of black culture which is resistant-oriented, was confrontational, working-class, radical, etc. So that type of multiculturalism the state panics about and does everything and, and de everything it can and deposits all of its capacity, which it has a massive amount, to destroy. And arguably they have destroyed that. Anyway, this is all fascinating things. I want, want to go back to a few more clips from Step Forward Youth of Menik Shabazz's in 1977 that we're sharing here. And to really just enjoy and celebrate the cultural musical aspect. First of all, the, the youngster, the young male who was talking, he's, he's playing in his uh, reggae band. He's a very good drummer. Got great skills there. So respect to you. And also, it's just wonderful to see black working class people gather together, enjoy, dance and celebrate. Uh, especially the resistance culture back then. So please do enjoy, please do indulge yourself in all of this. To be a revolutionary, you really have to every day 
literally use your senses to deepen yourself, to, to really consume yourself amongst the exploited, amongst the oppressed, and then to live out that and to do whatever you can to advocate with them and for them. Many thanks. <laughs>